everybody. Come on in. Welcome to Masterworks. Welcome to the showroom. This is where we have all the delicious little tidbits of our labors here at the workshop. We build hammer dulcimers primarily. We have lots of different models, small, medium, large, and even instruments with dampers. And we're working on some new stuff too, so keep in touch with us. We also build some simple or smaller folk instruments called bowed psalteries. And it's tuned like a piano, black keys, versus the white keys. Above the boat psalteries, we have picking sticks. Wonderfully easy, simple, just like a mountain dulcimer, only instead of laying them in your lap, you play them like a guitar. Great sounding instruments, easy to play and very inexpensive. Then over here in the corner, we have some a wide selection of mountain dulcimers, different tunings, bass, regular, even a dulci banjo. This instrument right here is my very first hammer dulcimer. I was teaching school in Medill, was driving school bus, had just been to Mountain View, Arkansas and fell in love with this instrument but could not afford to buy one. Got permission to disassemble a old piano. Got the soundboard, some pin blocks, the tuning pins and such and built my first instrument and uh, never looked back. It uh, turned into a, a, quite a, uh, a fever of a, of a passion for me and my life has never changed since. So anyway, a little bit of everything and then out here is the workshop. As you can see, we've got uh, a thousand and one little projects going on all at one time. If you'd like to stick with us, we'll take a, a little tour out in the workshop and we'll show you some of the processes. We've got Larry, who's been with us for 17 years, is our shop supervisor. We'll demonstrate some of the things that we do. Just a few of the probably a thousand and one processes in building Masterworks Hammer Dulcimers. Come on, let's go see them. This is how we actually begin. Sometimes folks ask, well, where do you get your sound boards? Or where do you get your pin blocks? And this is where they come from, raw pieces of wood. And they come from different parts of the country and even other countries. But uh, uh, these two beams down here that are four inches thick are genuine mahogany. And that is what uh, the sound boards are made out of on our nicer instruments. We slice it up on a bandsaw. This is the first piece of equipment that we actually uh, start cutting with. The mahogany or soundboard material, it could be sapelli, could be spruce, could be cedar, it has to be ripped into thin pieces and then those are glued. So the bandsaw is actually the first piece of equipment the wood sees. It cuts a very straight, thin cut. You can actually cut wood so thin that you can see light through it. Most fun thing I do is picking out wood. This is material that's ready to be sliced up for end rails, curly maple, dark curly bird's eye maple, rosewood. That's gonna be gorgeous right there. Hadoop. This is our assembly room. The room is just a, you know, a big size bedroom, I guess you might say, of, of uh, parts that we are about to use in construction of the instrument. We don't have all our parts in here. We can take up too much room, but we always have a month or two's worth of sound boards and backs and braces and end rails and pin blocks so that they can take on that humidity level that we're aspiring to achieve about 40%. As you can see, we've got a lot of clamps. We put a lot of pressure on joints in many different places. It's very easy actually to overclamp a piece of wood. You can actually squeeze the glue out and starve the joint. I'd much rather see a joint that has a little excess glue than one that's absolutely perfect because there's that fear that there might not be enough glue left in that joint to hold it together. Hammer dulcimer is not square or rectangle. It is a trapezoid. 
So it invites uh, all kinds of problems trying to get the instrument held together at one time. We have different kinds of jigs. This one uh, is what we call the bear hug jig. This is the, the one that makes the sandwich, if you want to think of it that way, the top, the back, and the braces in between. But then we have the process of gluing the end rails to the outside of the instrument. And that's particularly challenging because there's nothing over here to grab a hold of to clamp it to. So that's when we decided we had to have the jig that will allow our instruments to be clamped both on the wide end and the narrow end. And I'll give you just a little sneak peek at some uh, special piece of wood that we collected last summer. This is an all two and a half inch thick piece of curly koa from Hawaii. And this is where I've wet it down a little just to show the, uh, the curl and the attitude of the wood. It is very special, once in a lifetime find. There were three pieces and I got the, the prime piece whenever I was there. So uh, if you're looking for a once in a lifetime instrument, create a family heirloom, I got a special piece of wood to make it out of for you. Hawaiian Curly Koa. But that is just one of a hundred different beautiful exotic woods that uh, good lords made for us to use to make beautiful musical instruments out of. Let's go see the rest of the shop. When the instruments come out of the, uh, the assembly room, they're put on a, a rack, but as you can see, they're pretty rough. Uh, everything sticks out past something. You grind it down to the surface. This is a little more fun, where the end rails are sticking out past the soundboard and the pin blocks. We'll not worry about details, but just know that it doesn't just automatically happen. And we don't have a tool to run it through to do it for us. It's all hand, hand sanded. Then Krista will wind up with them in her hands. She'll take them back here to the sanding room. Here we are in uh, a sanding room. We have two of them. There's a wonderful dust collection downdraft table. You can sand here with nothing more than a uh, dust mask on. You don't have to have a respirator. Plus, we do a lot of staining in this room. Staining is uh, a pretty critical process. We offer that as uh, for free on the Pioneer package because we stain the entire instrument. But on our nicer instruments, we only want to stain the soundboard, leave the natural woods natural. So the uh, staining process is just a little bit more complicated. We start off by taping off the edge of the soundboard everywhere along the pin block and along the edge of the sound uh, end rails. Take it to the finish room and spray two coats of lacquer all the way around the, the edges of the instrument to seal the wood that's not going to be stained. After that dries, Usually the next day, we'll bring it back into the sanding room, take all this tape off, clean all the edges up, we stain the soundboard, try to do it as consistently as possible. Then we put two coats of sound of lacquer on before we sand it, and then pray that we don't sand through the stain as we go through the process of, sand, of finishing the instrument all the way through. We figure about one out of 10 comes back to be stripped and started over from scratch. We have almost endless uh, variations of stain available for folks and we have many many requests uh, for specialized colors. Send us a color swatch and we'll do our best to match it. It's fun to see the instrument take its final shape but the next place is where you really get to see the color pop out. Let's go to the finish room. We use both a water-based lacquer and lacquer thinner based lacquer. The water-based lacquer is very environmentally friendly and not dangerous to those that are using it. You don't even have to use a respirator with it. We have a large fan filtering the lacquer as it exits the building. The little table allows us to spray in all directions. Racks where we can work on several instruments at a time without touching each other. After each instrument batch is done, we rip off the tape, put on new tape, and uh, you don't have to worry about somebody bringing an instrument in with wax or grease or fingerprints or anything else uh, off of uh, uh, another product and getting it in the middle of a $3,000 instrument with a fingerprint in the middle. We want our signature on the instruments, but not that way. Welcome back into the workshop here. Um, as you can see, there's a whole variety of tools, but really nothing terribly specialized. We have a long edge belt sander. The bulk of the sanding is simply done by hand.
two or three different chop saws uh, because we have folks working on different projects from time to time. Uh, we have a large drill press over there, actually a milling machine, and that is set up to drill only the bridges because we're working really, really hard wood and we're drilling a, really a whole lot of holes. So we don't bother setting it up for anything else but drilling bridges. And Don Ward does our, our uh, bridges. We're real proud of uh, uh, the work he does. He's been doing that for about a decade now. But over here is a whole flurry of drill presses. We actually got bored one day and started trying to figure out how many holes we had drilled at Masterworks over the last 30 years and we we got tired of counting after four million. So four million plus. But they are, again, not anything extraordinarily special. The most important thing is you set it up for one process. You don't want someone to come by and readjust it. You come by, come back to work on it later, and uh, whoop, it's not working right anymore. So it's, uh, drill presses are not that expensive, and it's nice to have multiple setups so that you can uh, move from one process to the next as the day progresses and needs change. We have a wonderful dust collection system. I'm really proud of it, uh, especially after building for 10 or 12 years by myself using a box fan and a window for a dust collection system. We had this system designed professionally for all the different pieces of equipment we have. Plus, it's adjustable. It's very safe and you can work out here without having to wear a respirator and dust collection. This is the, the time saver. This takes a piece of wood that's multiple thicknesses or multiple pieces of wood that have been glued together and sands it down to where it is perfectly flat, five thousandths of an inch. It's wonderful. You can imagine how important it is for us with these large flat soundboards and backs for the hammer dulcimer. The name is very accurate, very time saving. Well, at Masterworks, we like to think we uh, are putting our signature on the instrument everywhere we go, but this is at least a hard copy of our signature. Well, thanks so much for coming by and visiting with us here at Masterworks. Hope you enjoyed the little tour of the workshop and meeting Larry. And I hope we were able to answer some questions and give you some ideas about what all is really involved in building a simple little box with strings stretched over it. Just a little more than that, I'm afraid. But anyway, if you're in the area, we would love for you to come by. If you're not, come on anyway. We've got a wonderful campground out back, motels east and west of us, conveniently located on Highway 70, goes all the way from Atlantic Ocean to the middle of Arizona. So come see us. I promise you, you'll enjoy it. Bring somebody with you. Bring your instrument, love to see it, like to see what other people's instruments sound like and look like and like to hear you play. But in the meantime, I'll play you a little tune here and hope that you come by and see us again one day. Thanks. Mm -hmm.